Close your eyes. Try to keep track, of, <coughs> keep track of your breath. Notice when it's coming in, when it's going out. Each time it comes in, each time it goes out. Try to be loyal to your breath. And try to figure out what kind of breathing feels good for you. You can get along well with the breath this way. If you pay careful attention to it, it's going to reward you. It's like any friendship. The more careful attention you give to your friend, the better the friendship is going to be. In this case, you're trying to find a place to settle down in the present moment so that you can watch your mind. Because as the Buddha pointed out, the things that we like in life are precisely the things that are causing us suffering. The things we cling to are causing us suffering. And he says there's a better way to find happiness. If this were the only happiness that were possible, then he'd probably say, well, go ahead and find what happiness you can right here. But there's a better happiness that can be found by letting go of the things that we like. To do that, we need to train the mind. So the teaching goes against the, the grain in a lot of ways. But we have to be willing to admit that we've seen ourselves cause ourselves suffering in the past, and we're tired of that. We're going to find a better way. And here's the better way that's been offered by the Buddha. They say that after his awakening, he spent five weeks or seven weeks experiencing the bliss of release. And then he contemplated this dharma that he had found. Would he teach it to others? He realized how difficult it was going to be, partly because the dharma was so subtle, and partly because people are really resistant. They say that the Brahma saw that the Buddha was inclined not to teach. After all, he didn't have to teach anybody. He could have spent the rest of his life just experiencing the bliss of release. But then that would have been a loss to the rest of us. So the Brahma saw this. He came down, got down on one knee, and begged the Buddha, Please teach human beings. There are those who, with little dust in their eyes, will take the teaching and benefit from it. When the Buddha saw that that was true, then he made up his mind that he would teach. This is why we have the teaching, because of that decision he made that night, that he would teach and put up with all the difficulties. Sometimes we forget that it was difficult for him. We see paintings in the temples of Thailand. It looked like he's floating around on a lotus with no hardship at all. But he had to walk all over northern India. He walked barefoot. And he walked wherever there was someone who was ready to, be, to learn the Dharma. And he had to put up with a lot of issues. Not only were there the sectarians who tried to smear his name, even those who ordained with him, some of the monks, some of the nuns, were troublemakers. It wasn't easy to teach people because people's defilements go in the other direction. But he was willing to do battle with their defilements after he had done battle with his, endure all the hardships. Even until he was 80 years old, he was still walking around, going from city to city, countryside to countryside, teaching, teaching, teaching. Even the very last day of his life, when he was sick, he continued walking many miles, but he finally laid down. So think about all the difficulty that he went to in order to get this dharma to us. And so here it is, it's offered to us freely. The question is, the Buddha had compassion for us, do we have compassion for ourselves? Well, it's good to think about the hardships he went through so that we can realize that, yes, we should be willing to put up with some hardships in order to practice the dharma too. So whenever you agree to aversion and illusion, say, no, we don't want to do this, ask yourself, have you trusted them? In the past you have, but have they delivered? No. And delivered a little bit, and they've tried to tell you that's all you, the happiness you're going to find, so you should content yourself with it. But the Buddha is saying there's something higher than that, something better than that. You shouldn't content yourself with the happiness that comes from clinging. You should learn how to let go of the things you cling to and find happiness that way. It goes against the grain. But he lays out the path for us. It's not the case that it's always going to be laid out like this. The Dharma is always true, but it's not always available. It is available now because of his compassion, pure compassion. He was not compelled to teach, but he taught anyhow. So have compassion for yourself. Take the Dharma and practice it. Because after all, that's why the Buddha taught. Not so that we would bow down to him and chant his praises, but so that we could take his teachings and get the best use out of them. That much less suffering in the world. <coughs>